How far would you go to have a baby? I was so desperate, I would have done anything to get a child. You won't believe the radical procedure Sharon tried. And guess what? It worked! How many children total have been born this way? 30. Lee already had two healthy boys then. My husband had always, always wanted a little girl. Find out what she did to make sure she had a girl. And when Angela couldn't afford fertility drugs, she turned to the internet. I wouldn't have changed a thing. Could what they did work for you? Extreme baby making. That's what's coming up right now. Today, and today we're going to be speaking with women who say that they sacrificed everything for the chance at one thing, and that's motherhood. They, like thousands of other women in this country, are part of a multi-billion dollar fertility industry that's going on right here in the United States. Take a look at this. For many social and economic reasons, the average age at which a woman gives birth to her first child has risen dramatically. 20 years ago, this would have seemed physically impossible, but nowadays, that is no longer the case. Assisted reproduction is a $4 billion a year business. Fertility evaluation, sperm injection, egg selection, embryo studies, and the list goes on and on. The technologies and the possibilities are highly evolved and becoming more utilized than most realize. And yet, the average cost for a successful pregnancy through an in vitro fertilization can cost up to, you ready for this, $100,000, making childbearing a rare luxury and not the attainable norm. Have we gone too far? What's next? In a few years, will you be ordering your clone child online? Well, my first guest got pregnant with a controversial treatment that is now banned here in the United States. Take a look at this. My husband, Paul, and I decided to have a family probably the day we got married. To me, the family is the most important thing on this planet. Once I decided to try, I went to see a specialist, and he put me on Clomid. That didn't work at all. Then I went on to try artificial inseminations. After five failed inseminations, I went on to a procedure called GIFT and then ZIFT. And after trying four of those, I went to try another route. Sharon went through quite a few procedures until we finally went into in vitro. The cytoplasm transfer was something that my doctor recommended. My eggs weren't of good quality, so he recommended I use a donor egg, and it's not actually her baby, it's a protein surrounding the baby. And you drain a minute piece of that and inject it into my egg to make it healthier and stronger. My daughter, Alana was born on December 1st, year 2000. Alana has brought us peace and joy. I was so flabbergasted that they would not allow CT available anymore when I, in front of me, had a very healthy, normal child, and I couldn't understand why the FDA would ban something like that. Please welcome Sharon to the show. Were you trying to get pregnant before you tried to get any assistance? Uh, the minute I got married. I have a sister with a history. She tried 10 years and mm -hmm. had a baby by in vitro, so I figured I better try right away. And how old were you when you got married? 36. 36. So you recognize that. So you immediately yeah. started looking for help. Yeah. Why not adopt? Because I wanted the feeling of actually carrying the baby, mm -hmm. feeling it kick inside me, delivering the baby. Okay. Just to have my own child. Mm -hmm. So you first started out with, the first thing is the doctors put you on a cycle of medication. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And that medication is to do what? Uh, help you make more follicles. More follicles, which yes. are the eggs. That's right. Okay, so yeah. um, you went on that cycle, on a cycle of this medication for how long? Just once. And you, is it oral or is it injectable? It's oral. Okay, so you did yeah. that, they said, eh, ain't working. It wasn't working, yeah. Not at all. No. So you weren't producing more eggs? No. So then the next step is what? Artificial insemination. Which means that don't Three. they have to put you on more drugs to yes. see if they can harvest some eggs? Yes, yes. So now talk about that for a second. Yeah. There are a lot of women out here across this country yeah. who that's a viable option for them. Right. So how was and, that And feel? I was making a few <clears throat> eggs with that. Mm -hmm. And then they basically then after they feel that the eggs are ready at the right size they should be, then the sperm is injected inside you. So it's not a whole lot of assistance with the doctor. Then you go home and you lay down for about 
half hour or so, and then wait two weeks. And I, I tried, oh, probably at least five of those. Five? Yeah. And can I ask just a side question? Like, how much was the drugs? The drugs were... Was I was expensive? lucky. My insurance covered my drugs. Oh, that's so, great. I mean, they can run into, they were probably two, three thousand dollars. All right. Yeah. And then in vitro each time? You Ten thousand. Oh, yeah. so, and that didn't work? No, I tried um, four in vitros. Mm -hmm. So that by then, was, that was forty thousand dollars. So I went to this doctor and he right away liked him. He was so aggressive. He said, you've got this problem. I can do this and this and this for you. He suggested cytoplasm transfer. Okay, now let's yeah. explain what this is because it is yeah. extremely controversial. Yes. And um, matter of fact, it's been banned now in the United right. States. So the controversy behind it is what? They take your egg, right. which they have determined for some reason is deficient in one... I'm going to try to do this in layman's terms. Right. Deficient in long term, don't sue me, in some sort of a protein or something. That's right. right. A chemical. Yeah. It's deficient. Your egg is. So right. now they go to another woman. Yeah. Who's donated an egg. Uh -huh. They take her egg. Right. They take part of that substance out of yeah, that so egg. Not the baby, just the surrounding area of it. And they put the that protein. into your egg. Yes. But now are so they not just a tiny amount. Just okay. a tiny amount. That tiny little yeah. amount lets some of that other person's DNA go in there. Yes. So now you have a baby that's yeah. growing. Most people have two DNAs. Right. You have a baby with three DNAs. Yeah, that's correct. Now, this worked, right? It totally worked. And that's why I'm such an advocate for it, because I tried four in vitro, so nothing worked. I go on to my fifth in vitro, and this one worked. So I thought, okay, this is great. This is working. My eggs weren't of good quality, so I figured, why not try this, add a little protein, make it a healthier, stronger egg, and sure enough, it did work for me. So you had a healthy baby. Totally healthy baby. Would your child come back with three DNAs? We don't know. Well, that's what I, I... We don't we don't know that. And I and I haven't I haven't had that tested, but doctors say to me, "Well, she's going to have chromosomal abnormalities." So I did have that tested and she's fine. So she's totally healthy. Okay, so so most I shouldn't say most of the time, do we know yeah. how many children total have been born this way? 30. 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you and you don't feel like you've taken any risk at all with this because Montel, if you're uh, as desperate as I was, mm -hmm. you don't care. She so had one healthy baby and then yeah. you decided to take the journey to try to do it again. Yeah. But this is after you found out it was banned in the United States. Right. So you had to go where to get this to done? To Lebanon. To Lebanon mm -hmm. to get this done the next yeah. time. We'll take a little break. We come back. Why don't you take us on a journey to Lebanon and tell us how it worked. Okay. Take a break. We'll be back right after this. Every woman has her different limit. Not everyone will go this far. I was going to do what it takes to get a baby. Mm, okay. I was desperate. I still ended up spending $10,000. Oh, mm -hmm. And did you get a baby out of this? No. almost everything to have a child and Sharon and again welcome Sharon to the show <laughs> and again this is not a judgment I'm saying you go to the doctor and the doctor says you know what girlfriend I would love to do this for you again yeah but they banned this in the United States I can't right. do it for you yeah now, uh, I'm sitting back on it's banned in the United States if they told me tomorrow teeth whitening was banned mm -hmm. in the United States there might be a reason I'm not letting you wipe my teeth. Yeah. So why would you say, okay, I'm gonna go someplace else and do because this? Because every day I see her and she's incredible. Mm. She's my whole world now. Mm. She's totally healthy. She learned to read at three. So I don't I don't see a problem with that. Okay. So you said, okay, Lebanon, here we go. But That's how right. about just even the idea of going to a foreign country where well, that was scary. Know, doctors are doing test yeah. tube stuff yeah. and sticking needles in. We don't know if they're using the same procedure. And, all the I mean, and it wasn't safe at that time either. Right. You know, I had to call the State Department. They said, don't go only if you think you should go. Well, of course, in my mind, I, I had to have another baby because it's a all-consuming drive. Mm -hmm. I think you have to understand what it's like. Every woman has her different limit. Not everyone will go this far. I was going to do what it takes to get a baby. Mm, okay. I was desperate. So you go. I was desperate. Yeah. You, you go there. How many weeks did you have to spend in Lebanon? I was supposed to be there seven days. I end up staying there fifteen. Mm. And through that fifteen-day period of time, I, I got. I try to understand this again. Mm. They have to put you on drugs first to harvest yeah. eggs. How many eggs do you think they pull out of you at that time? At that time, I think it was five. Mm -hmm. So then they take all five of those eggs. Yeah. 
and they mix it with your husband's sperm. Right. They fertilize the egg first, mm -hmm. and then they inject it with the other DNA or the other right. the other chemical. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and put it back inside of you. Right. Now, do they do it in vitro ways, or do they do it when they put it like in a fallopian tube or uh, something? Mine goes through the tubes. Yeah. So, so they actually go in, put it in a fallopian tube, so that it'll then travel down into the uterus exactly. and, and find its own spot. Yeah. How much did this procedure cost you when you went the second time? Because of the cost of the, the flights, the hotel, the, the food, I still... 15 days in a hotel in Lebanon, yeah, wow. Yeah, I still end up spending $10,000. Well, mm -hmm. and did you get a baby out of this? No. So, now have you stopped? Is that oh, yeah. it? So you're not going to do this anymore again. Would you recommend this procedure for somebody else to actually leave the state, to leave the country and go do this? I, I guess it's being perfected and it's, it's, they've been yeah. working on it more and more. For me, I was so desperate. I would have done anything to get a child and to see my daughter now. I'm so in love with her. She's just my whole world. Mm -hmm. she, she just makes me smile every day. So I would recommend it to a person. Okay. Well, that's what we're talking yeah. about today, guys. We're talking about some really controversial mm -hmm. and, and in some ways illegal. We're going to talk about some other things later on in the show that are illegal because right now on the Internet, a lot of these drugs that, that you use to help mm -hmm. boost the amount of eggs that you make, a lot of these drugs are extremely expensive. And what we're finding now here in this country that a black market now exists yeah. on the Internet for people trying to buy these fertility drugs through the Internet, having them delivered at your house. Let me just tell you right now, folks, Buying drugs that way over the internet, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know whether or not you're actually getting the actual drug. You don't know what you're getting. And people are doing this more and more and more. And it's not only buyer beware, you're putting yourself at risk. And when it comes to fertility drugs, you are breaking the law. I'm going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to meet a woman who says she spent, are you ready for this? $300,000 to get pregnant. We'll be back right after this. Well, all four of my children were conceived by different means and variations of the technologies that are out there. The overall cost to have my four children is probably between $300,000 and $400,000. Yes, was pregnant, watch this, 13 times and spent $350,000 on fertility treatments. treatments. Take a look at this. I graduated from college, entered the workforce, met my husband, got married very young, decided to buy a house and have children, and I began having miscarriages and ultimately ended up seeking the help of a infertility specialist. I basically did everything. All four of my children were conceived by different means and variations of the technologies that are out there. The first one was a simple pill. And three weeks later, you know, I got a positive pregnancy test. And nine months later, I had a baby. My second child was a frozen embryo. would criticize and wonder why you're doing this and I, I just I wanted my children very badly. I cannot imagine myself without children and if given the opportunity to do it all over again, I would do it. Every single thing that I had to go through, I would go through it again. Please welcome Lee to the show. You know, I, I, gotta, I gotta back up and I'll ask you the same question I asked Sharon. After you had multiple miscarriages, and I'm just saying, I'm asking, and this is really not a judgment, just asking, why not say, uh-uh, I'm just gonna adopt, because obviously something's happening to me, and nature doesn't want this to work that way. Why not? Well, basically for the same reasons that Sharon talked about, I wanted to, I wanted to carry my children. I wanted to experience pregnancy, I wanted to give birth, and I wanted to have a biological as well as a, a genetic link to those children. Okay, so now, when you started the process, it, obviously you researched it, you looked around, tried to find the right doctors, right mm -hmm. clinic. So you're first, and again, you, again, you kind of went through 
two different categories, three different categories to do it. The comet was first, right? Right. I had had several miscarriages prior to conceiving my first child. Mm -hmm. And I went through an, an initial, pretty traditional infertility workup and I had some surgery, I had something called a laparoscopy. And which was pretty, they didn't really find too much. Um, and they, after that, the next month they gave me uh, Clomid, and, uh, which is just a pill again. And I was able to conceive on my own, actually, with the help of that. And the pregnancy was uneventful. I went to term and he's fine. And about 15 months later, or when he, yeah, when he was 15 months, we decided that we would try to try again and we'd have no problem and mm -hmm. whatever. So we did the same protocol and it just, this time didn't work. So the Clomid didn't work the second time? Four we did four, four rounds of the Clomid. So we moved on to injectable medications and uh, started doing IUIs, which are the inseminations. Mm -hmm. And uh, that didn't work either. So they went back in, I had another surgery. And they, they found some potential reasons for why it wasn't working and kind of cleared everything. It should work again. So we went back with the injectables and I had multiple eggs now and uh, with the IUIs two more times and it didn't work. No, wait, with the injectables, this is not, they're not taking the eggs out. No, no, just, injecting just, just the medications to stimulate. To stimulate produce, more eggs, so you're producing eggs, eggs right. and then you're so hoping... Each, each cycle you have a greater chance. If you're just gotcha. producing one egg, you have one egg's worth of a chance. If you gotcha. have 15, you got a much greater chance of... But you could have multiples too at that point, right? Yeah, that's one of the risks that you run. Okay, all right, so you decided to do that, didn't no. work. No. So after that, um, we decided to, or the doctor suggested that we try in vitro, which is the process where they actually take the eggs out now. Okay. Um, exactly what Sharon did. They take the eggs out. And how, many, how many eggs do you, did you produce each time they did uh, this? About 10 eggs. And I then know. are they are they fertilizing those 10? They, yeah, there are different ways of fertilization, uh, different methods of fertilization. Right. And uh, we tried, well, two basic ways. Um, we tried them both and uh, I got textbook quality embryos. If you looked at them and graded them on every parameter that they would grade them on, it, they were perfect. And they were like, they were so, so concerned that I was going to have triplets that they were arguing with me about uh, the number that they would actually put back into my uterus. Okay. So, and they, you know, they kept saying, you're going to get pregnant, you're going to get pregnant. And I'm just like, okay, okay. And meanwhile, I've been doing all this research on the, um, in another area of reproductive end endocrinology, which is fairly new. And it has to do with um, immunosuppression. Mm -hmm. And I was being told by other doctors that I would never get pregnant unless I took medications that su su would suppress my immune system. Uh, hold right there. I'm going to take a little break. When we come back, this last cycle, that one right there, it did take, did it not? Well, I had done four in vitro fertilizations after the initial 10. Okay. I, with the IUIs and all the injectables. I did the in vitros mm -hmm. with two different doctors, one of whom is like the guru of in the field of infertility. and. Uh, it just, it didn't work. And uh, despite what they were saying were textbook quality embryos, they were just not implanting. So at that point they were proposing that I just keep going. And the other doctor, the other school of thought from the other doctors, which the original doctors didn't really believe in, was that uh, I had to take certain medications. All right, let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. Spending approximately, I believe it was $750 on the internet on that initial purchase and through a pharmacy would have cost us anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. Along this journey, you almost lost your life. Yes. Correct. And that was another failed pregnancy, correct? No, well, no, that no. was you were pregnant, right? And it was the one... first time that I had deviated from the normal standard of procedure and uh, added in the immunosuppressive drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's the first try, I became pregnant with twins. And everybody, I had had to go to Chicago to do that. And uh, the doctors back in here in New York, when they found out about it, were just kind of floored <laughs> because they kept saying this, this treatment it wouldn't work mm -hmm. and it wasn't it just wasn't medically acceptable. Although the medication I took is, is FDA approved for many other diseases. It's, it's just an off-label use for this, right? Right. So I used the medication, got pregnant, two, two healthy little fetuses and, and were growing and growing. The pregnancy was going fine. And my first child 
came home from nursery school with scarlet fever, of all things. And, okay, so, and I should say, God, I'm sorry, you lost that pregnancy? Yeah, the, I became septic from the, I got the bacteria from scarlet fever is caused by group A strep. I got it from my son, and uh, he recovered well, fortunately, and unfortunately, I became septic and almost died. The, the babies died. I was in the hospital watching them do the sonogram as the heartbeat stopped, so it was pretty pretty devastating. Okay, but again, then, I'll come back to Lee at this point. Why mm -hmm. not stop? Simply because I knew what it meant to have a child. I had one, and I just, that desire became stronger, mm -hmm. not only for, for me, but because I wanted him to have a sibling. And that's not making, I'm not making any statements about, you know, only children. I, I, I just wanted him to have a sibling. I didn't want him to go through life without. So once you got healthy enough, you did right. it again. I didn't realize how sick I was. We did it a few times and the bacteria kept killing off, uh, making me sick when I would get pregnant. And I would just, I would, I would beca I kept, became septic two more times and uh, had a tonsillectomy to get rid of it and hemorrhage from that. <laughs> but I'm looking at people shaking their heads saying stop, right? Stop! Okay, but that's not for us to judge. So you oh, went I after two more times, then you got pregnant again. And to kind of get myself back on track mentally, and I went back to one of the doctors in New York with whom I had done the original in vitro, mm -hmm. and I still had four frozen embryos there. And when I walked into his office, he said, you know, why are you here? I said, well, you know, I want to have my embryos transferred, but I don't want to do it without the benefit of the IVIG and the other, the other medications that worked for me the first time. And uh, out of the four embryos, two of them now took. Now, this was from a cycle that didn't work originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd been frozen, like I said, for two years. Two of them took. I miscarried one, and the other one is a perfectly healthy little boy running around at home. So now you have two children. Now, I, at that point, I had two. Now, how many do you have now? I have four. So then you did it again? We did not intend to go back and do it again. Um, we were happy and content and had no plans. And then what happened was they started coming out with uh, technology. Well, my husband had always, always, always wanted a little girl. And so you went someplace where they utilize the technique to screen sperm eggs to make sure yeah, the chances of having a girl are higher than well, having a boy? No, they, what they do is they biopsy the embryos mm -hmm. before they put them back. And it screens for genetic, dis, dis, genetic uh, abnormalities as well. Mm -hmm. So it's used mainly for people who have uh, recessive uh, genetic disorders like tay sachs but they can use it, they, they can tell whether it's an XY chromosome. Okay, well, but for you, uh, no, I should say, we were doing say for, for, gender. for gender selection, right. and that technique is used all over this world for gender selection. Now, out of that last go-round, you had two children. Well, yeah. what happened was I did two cycles with the, gene it's, the procedure is called PGD, or pre-implantation genetic di uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We did that with two cycles. Um, those cycles did not work, and we just said, you know what, let's give it one more shot. We didn't do the PGD. Mm -hmm. We just did regular, good old, good old-fashioned IVF now, as ridiculous as that sounds, mm -hmm. and uh, rolled the dice, and I ended up with, out of three embryos that were put back into me, two of them took, and I, one of them was a boy, and the last one was a girl. So yeah. now, are you guys done now? You don't have any more kids, or you're thinking about having more? Uh, we haven't even thought, it, thought about it. It's not on the table. I have embryos frozen. What I'm going to do with them, I don't know. Now, you have to pay mm -hmm. to keep those embryos frozen for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Depending on what I decide to do with them, yes. Okay, and, 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 and the only reason why I bring this up, because this is a very important point right now, and I want you guys to understand this, right now in America today, there are about, mm, and estimates are off. Some people say 350,000 to 500,000 fertilized embryos frozen cryogenically in the country today. What you don't know is that, so there are good people like Lee who continue to pay the bill to keep them frozen. If she misses a payment, all her eggs, like about 10,000 more of them each month, get thrown in the garbage can. Right now we have an issue in this country about things like stem cell research. And we're looking into this. Now we're doing all this research to ensure a pregnancy. So I would say that if we're gonna throw them in the garbage can, why not utilize them I agree. to help I agree. save some more lives I agree. and help keep people safe? I agree. That's the point I agree. I'm making. I agree. Okay, well, Brittany, come back. A woman who admits to buying her fertility drugs. Now, this is a crazy one. I know neither one of you would have done this. Would you have bought those fertility drugs yourself on your own on the internet from somebody? Some of them, perhaps, yes. Because wow. they're, in, they're in 
glass containers. You have to break them open yeah. to get the drug. But guess what? Right now, in this country, this country is flooded with about 25% fake drugs from the originate, not the originating source, mm -hmm. but everything from Vicodin. You name the drug, you got people right now in places like Afghanistan and other places, under rocks, printing this stuff out as if they're printing them out, uh, some of it's sugar pills. So I'm gonna go back and say, buyers gotta beware. We'll take a little break, we'll be back right after this. her fertility medication so she bought online at a reduced price. I want you to take a look at this. My husband and I felt it was very important to have a family together. I came from a large family and I knew that I really wanted a child of my own. We weren't able to have children right away because I had had my tubes tied many years prior. When we consulted a doctor, they told us our best option for us would be to have the in vitro since it completely bypassed the fallopian tubes and went straight to the uterus. The medications at a pharmacy would range anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars. Well because the uh, medication was very expensive we looked to get the medication over the internet. The website that we found was a uh, place where couples that went through the process had extra meds left over either when they were unsuccessful or they already gotten pregnant and had all this extra medication left over. We ended up spending approximately, I believe it was $750 on the internet on that initial purchase. And that same medication through a pharmacy would have cost us anywhere from three to $5,000. It's a very emotional procedure to go through. You're under a lot of stress. You want to have a family. It's a lot of money. And if we had to do it all over again, we'd probably do the same thing all over again because we know we were able to have our son. Welcome Angela to the show. Please welcome her. You obviously had studied this having had a tubal ligation. The doctors came back and said what to you about your tubes? Um, that they were both damaged. Both were damaged, so were damaged. chances of you having a pregnancy that way were slim to none. Slim to none. Okay, so they say, okay, I think, you know, you're a perfect candidate for in vitro. We can harvest your eggs, then we can go ahead and put them back in you artificially, right? Correct. But I just want you to know that to do that, you got to take this medication. And That's oh, right. by the way, the price tags, $7,000. That's right. What? And you obviously said, not happening that way. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had thought about the price and um, it was... We're just from a middle-income family. We didn't know if we could afford it. Um, so we did start researching on the Internet to find out what other options were available to us. You went through a process trying to find the right person to buy this from, right? I did. You searched out. How many people did you, did you kind of pass up before you found the right person? Five to seven. Five to seven. And you, you found immediately five to seven people who were willing to sell you those drugs. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the last one, number seven? The last person we spoke to... When talking with her, it was like talking with a friend. Mm -hmm. She was, she had gone through the procedure before. She had twins from an in vitro procedure. Um, I think it was her third attempt. And she was trying to help a friend who was unsuccessful in the in vitro procedure. And um, after talking with her for about an hour and a half, I was just very, very comfortable with her. And you realized that she had medication left over. That's correct. So mm -hmm. you took them. Yes. It worked. It did. See, now, I, I gotta tell you, my only fear is that I'm afraid to send a message out. Were you not afraid that you might have gotten some sort of a counterfeit? You, this could have been somebody scamming you. The phone call could have been rerouted through to Bolivia and there's some lady down there that's sending you drugs from some wrong place? Absolutely not. No fear at all? None. And you have, what, two babies to show? Who did you have, twins or one? No, we, we ended up with one. So, with uh, healthy. Question. Now, would you do it again? Uh, probably. If, if given the opportunity and the finances, we only had the finances to try it the one time. Mm -hmm. So had it not worked, we probably would have explored adoption. Mm -hmm. That's something we're actually talking about now. That you my, might do. My husband is half Chinese. Oh, excuse me, my husband is Chinese, my child is half Chinese. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to go to China to adopt him uh, a little sister one day. Okay. But, and, um, and opt out of having a second child. Only because 
I'm older than my husband, and the process is really hard on me, as you talked about the medications and sure. what they do to your body and um, the way it makes you feel. It was really, I had a really rough pregnancy, and as far as um, just like they were talking about the bloating and. But after that all nature. said and done, that beautiful little baby was well worth it. You're right. All right. And I, I wouldn't have changed. Wait, before we go any further, I want to make sure I get something clear. At the time that you did this, you had no idea that it was illegal to distribute these drugs across the internet that way, right? No earthly idea. And I should say, that having known that, I'm going to tell you, it is illegal to sell in, uh, for these kinds of drugs across the internet. Now, please welcome the founder of the National, founder and national director of the Center for Bioethics and Culture Network, Jennifer Law, to the show. Welcome to you. And also, the medical director of assisted reproduction at St. Barnabas Hospital, Dr. Margaret Garrisey. Welcome to the show. Thank you both for being here. I've talked about a lot of stuff here on the show today, and I know both of you were backstage listening to it. What do you think about this? Well, it is very complicated, and I've been sitting back listening, and of course many questions come to mind. I think it's important for all of us to remember that cheaper ways and certainly there's poor people that when they're infertile and they're diagnosed with infertility uh, we sort of rub our hands and say gee that's too bad um, and we don't have uh, uh, technology solve for them. Well why are we not working at technology just to figure out what causes infertility to begin with and not go through all these procedures of having to replicate, you know. It, I agree and, and with the reproductive revolution we found a way around a problem so we stopped looking at the problem. We stopped saying why is infertility in the world and in America on the rise? Why are so many women, men, uh, struggling with infertility like we've never seen before? And because the technology has have allowed us to circumvent that problem, we've stopped asking those questions. But Dr. Garcia, but what would be, what's, I, I have to flip the coin and say, well, what's the problem with doing this anyway? Because there shouldn't be a problem. If technology allows us to have a baby and do it this way, why not do it? Um, I would actually have to say that seeing the, the three women before um, and the audience seeing them, the joys with their family, um, I've been in practice as an infertility specialist for 22 years now and I feel in a very um, wonderful fabulous career in reproductive medicine to help people have families you see this joy here and what bothers me is why people think reproductive health is not as important as other health for example my grandfather died at 54 of a heart attack my father had his first heart attack at 58, but managed to live to 75 by having a bypass. What is the difference of advances in medicine in other areas, and you can't have advances in medicine and reproductive health? But why not have advances in figuring out why there's a problem to begin with, rather than jumping to just the solution? Because my fear is that when it comes, I'm telling you, I, I'm like Star Wars here. My fear is that when it comes to, you know, adding a third person's DNA or, or something else to the mix, we don't know what's going to happen five years from now. I practice mainstream reproductive treatments, and when there is a known cause, we try to remedy that. For example, the women spoke about a medication called Clomid. If I said... 40% of infertility is a sperm problem, 30% is not ovulating, which is what Clomid was invented for, 20% of infertility is maybe a tubal problem in the wife, 10% is unknown. We don't know and people are doing research every day to find out what that, why that 10% can't get pregnant. Maybe 50 years ago, 50% of infertility was unknown. Okay, okay, adopt a baby, um, quit your job, uh, say a rosary and maybe you'll get pregnant. But we've, we, we've gotten that that category of 50% unknown down to 10%. So if a woman has to ripen a follicle on an ovary to release an egg and she's not ovulating and she's not doing that, Clomid is a medication to help her do that. So in a sense, we've learned about the necessity of women to ovulate their eggs in order to conceive. So we, if, we, if that's their problem, they get a medication for that. Everyone, Clomid's been around for how long? maybe more than 50 years, much longer than IVF, which has been around about 32 years. We've not looked long enough to see what the 
ramifications are of the drugs inducing birth to know whether or not down the road that predisposes someone else to a genetic deep malformation, I don't know, and then that baby has a baby, and the next thing you know, that baby is more susceptible to bird flu, and we're all dead. I'll take a break, we'll be back right after this. I look at the joy on these three women's faces mm -hmm. and recognize that they wanted, there was a need, they wanted to have children, mm -hmm. and science and technology has helped them do so. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong with science and technology working for good when it comes to the family? Is there anything wrong? I don't think, I don't, is there anything wrong with that? Well, that's the, that's the debate. You know, what are, the, what are the limits? What are the lines? I mean, is it okay to use the technology so that women postmenopausal can have children? I mean, does there, does, are we going to say, yeah, that's fine and that's good? And are we going to say, no, not there? I mean, how do we decide where the lines are? I, mean, that's I, the, I, that's I also got to go back to the question I asked these the three ladies who were laymen, so I asked two doctors the same question. There is a reason why 10,000 embryos are being destroyed in this country every 35 to 40 days, being destroyed. Now, if we're destroying them and we think that it's so important for science and technology to bring life and keep life regenerating in America and in this world, why isn't it so important to keep people alive? I'm suffering from an illness that stem cell research could help with. And if you're gonna throw these things in a garbage can, why can't I go dipsy dumpster diving and turn this over to some doctors to do some research with the garbage that you were throwing away. I don't, I'm, I, don't, I don't get it. So why can't or, or why can't a mother who has four extra eggs there that she's kept alive and realize I'm not having more, any more children say, okay, you know what? Let's give this to this research laboratory and let them take those stem cells out of those four eggs, and it's okay because if we dumped in a, jumped in a, a dipsy dumpster one time, we get five thousand those eggs. We would never have to harvest another um, embryo for stem cell research, ever, ever. The entire world, every doctor in the world that wanted to test on embryos could have an embryo to test on from one garbage can jump. Now, when are we going to have doctors support this? I don't, I don't, what, what do you think, Jennifer? Well, well I, th I know that there's clinical trials going on right now at Northwestern uh, at Rush on M MS uh, using umbilical cord stem cell research. And these are human clinical trials. So I think that that research is going on. I think it's really important, and most people don't realize it's illegal to freeze an embryo in Germany. We, they don't make surplus embryos. Um, if the woman is coming in for IVF, they make as many as they're going to implant, which is usually two or three. Uh, I would like to see in the United States us get away from this sort of uh, reproductive Harvesting. technology on steroids, no pun intended, because that's what these women take is powerful, powerful steroids, which are harmful, um, so that we can generate 10, 12, 15, 20 eggs. And we have this huge problem of a half a million frozen embryos. Whereas in Germany, it's illegal to freeze one. They have less than 50 uh, frozen embryos but in Germany. Why not use ones being thrown away for research? I well, think they, that's a real option. And I mean, we certainly give that option to our patients at IRMS St. Barnabas. There's a consent form that they can, you know, donate the embryos to research, and we encourage that, absolutely. Ms. Graham, maybe some of you ought to be writing that note to the president and tell him to encourage some research, too. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. If you want more information about today's show and you happen to be one of the people who's out there trying your best to figure out what you need to do, contact us on our website. I want to thank all of our guests for being here today. This was probably one of the most informative hours I've done on our reproductive uh, technology, period. In the last 16 years, I've done this show. So thank you so much for helping people out with this. It is really clearly to me, and I hate to say it this way because I would make a lot of men angry, it's a mother's choice. Mm -hmm. Because they're the ones that have to go through all of what they're going through to make this happen. I, and I, 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 again, I look at the smiles on your faces and recognize that there's a need. So I think we just got to make sure that we, and I don't want to use the term morally, but we as a society catch up to technology and we try to hold technology a little bit more responsible. Congratulations to the three of you. Thank you. I'm out of time. Join us on the next Montana.